Welcome to our Ayurveda talk tonight. We are going to be talking about how Ayurveda deals with healing the body. This is a pretty complex topic because, you know, there's a lot of times um, I will want to focus on a particular topic. And then when I do the research on it, I find out, wow, there's a lot involved in this. So when you are dealing with somebody who um, needs rejuvenation, needs strength, they're dealing with, like, say they had surgery and they're dealing with recovery or they have an injury, like me right now, I'm dealing with an injury and I'm trying to recover from my injury or you got depleted from being sick. And sometimes people get sick and then they're sick for weeks and it takes them a long time to get better. A lot of people, when they got COVID, it took them a long time to get better. So what can we do to help ourselves recover faster? And Ayurveda has definite techniques that they use. And um, it's a pretty involved topic. I'm just going to go over a few things and we can elaborate on it more at another time. But one of the things that's really important that people don't always consider is their diet. And when you are dealing with depletion or sickness and it affects your appetite, you have to really start at a certain place. And I want to give you guys an example. Years ago, 10, 10 9 years ago, I ended up getting sepsis. I got really, really sick. I thought I had the flu. It ended up going septic and I was in ICU for a week or something like that. I did not eat for an entire week and I almost died. It was, and some of you have heard this story, but what happened was I survived. And when they, when I finally was, when they realized, okay, she's going to make it, I had to start eating. <laughs> And so the way that they dealt with it in the hospital was the doctor finally told the nurse, hey, she can have food, bring her food. And they brought me a turkey sandwich, a Coca-Cola and some pudding. And I couldn't eat it because I had not eaten for a week. Plus I had the flu before I even got into the hospital. I, I, I my digestion my digestive fire, which in Ayurveda, we call it Agni, was so weak that I couldn't even chew gum. If I chewed gum, the, the acids in my stomach would come back up. I, I used to be a, an addict. I used to chew gum all the time, all day, every day. And I, I stopped chewing gum after all of that. I never chewed gum again. Part of the problem with gum, just a little side note, is that it triggers the first stage of digestion. So in Ayurveda, we, we usually recommend don't chew gum. It, it's you're triggering the first stage of digestion and then that's it, that's all that's happening. Okay, so what one of the things that you can do after something like that event that I went through was to gradually introduce food. And it's a process that I learned in Ayurveda when I first went through Ayurveda courses 15 years ago. And it's called Samsarjana Krama. That's what it's called. And it is a gradual process because the whole purpose is that you want to strengthen the digestive fire, the Agni. And then you also want to nourish the body. Well, if you can't digest, you can't nourish the body. I mean, and that's something that we're not thinking about a lot of times. You have to make sure that you can digest your food. A lot of people will say you are what you eat. In Ayurveda, we say you are what you digest. Because if you're not digesting your food, that means it cannot nourish you. So this process is very gradual. And the first stage is when somebody has weak digestion, like what happened to me. I had, I had no digestion. My immune system was completely shot because of the drugs that they had to give me that saved my life. I'm very grateful for that. Um, 
but it really, it was like I had gone through chemo. My hair fell out and my skin peeled off. It was crazy. It took me years to recover. Um, but the first thing that you want to do with somebody who is going through something like that, that is so depleted, or even with dealing with an injury, like what I'm dealing with right now, I have a sprained knee, something like that. You want to simplify your diet. First stage is just giving the person boiled rice water. That's it. And the reason why is because basmati rice is the rice that we use. And it metabolizes sweet. Sweet taste is the most nourishing taste. And we've talked about that. But I want to just remind you guys that when you're eating something that is sweet, this is why people gain weight from eating too much sweet. Because it's building. It's a builder. And so sweet taste, anything that metabolizes sweet, will be building, building tissue, nourishing and that's why it's so beneficial if you're dealing with something that has made you sick or you're needing to recover or even getting over a cold and you need to build your immune system again. You simplify your diet. Okay, so weak digestion, you want to make sure that you're just having like a third of a cup of basmati rice in four cups of water. And then you cook it for 25 minutes and then you strain out the rice and you drink the water. You don't even eat the rice. Okay. That is if you are, that is if you went through something like I went through where I had no digestion. There was no way I could have a Coca-Cola and a turkey sandwich. I couldn't even bite into it. I was like, I, it was disgusting. Okay. Second stage. Second stage means that the person's appetite is increasing. That means the Agni is getting a little bit stronger. And at this point, you make the basmati rice with water, except that it's a little less water, two to three cups. So if you're doing a third of a cup of basmati rice, you would do two to three cups of water. You wanna go higher, three cups if the digestion's weak, less two cups if the digestion is stronger. Again, you cook it for 25 minutes and then you eat the rice and the water. So this is the second stage. The third stage is when someone now has a better appetite and the digestion is good. Those are two different things, by the way. Those are two different. They're similar. They're related. But having strong Agni and strong appetite. So strong Agni usually means you have a strong appetite. But you want to consider both of those things. Okay, so you have strong, ap good appetite and good digestion. You'll, you would be doing a third of a cup of pre-soaked split mung beans. Sometimes these are hard to find, but I usually tell people go to the Indian store. I don't go to Whole Foods to get them or Sprouts. I go there, sometimes they don't have it. I go to the Indian store, they always have it. Split mung beans and you soak them. I usually um, boil the water and then I soak them in two cups of water until the beans are soft. And then you make it into a soup. So then you cook it, okay? And then you can add, at this point, you can add some spices. So the spices that you wanna have to help regain strength and also strengthen the Agni, the digestive fire, is turmeric. That's for inflammation as well. Ginger, ginger is gonna help with appetite. Salt is going to help with absorption, okay? And that's your next stage. The final stage is when somebody's got the good appetite and they have good digestion and everything's going well and they're absorbing everything from the other stages. Now you go further and you can lessen the amount of water and you add mung bean with rice and you cook it. It has to be two hours because of the beans. And then you add even more spices. So you can add turmeric, the ginger, the salt, but you also add pepper. Pepper, by the way, helps digestion. And you can add pipoli, that's gonna be spicy. And then depending upon your dosha, you can add dosha appropriate spices. 
And then you have a nice nourishing soup. Very, very nourishing for the entire body, all the tissues. So this is a way of building strength in the body because you're not you're not doing too much too soon. You have to be gradual. You don't want to freak out your system. Be gradual, right? You want to absorb everything you're eating. Okay. Now, if we're talking about specific things, like how do we do rejuvenation? Well, this is where Ayurveda gets a little bit complicated because we don't typically rejuvenate people unless we make sure that they have toxins removed from their system. So that's where it gets tricky. If you're rejuvenating somebody and they have a lot of toxins in their system, it's kind of like pushing toxins further into the tissues. So that's why I kind of started out saying, oh, I go into a topic and it ends up being so much more. But I just want to give you a quick little rundown of what that process would look like. It's called the disease management process. And this is a traditional way of Ayurvedic healing program. It's a traditional program. And there's eight components to it. First, you find out what the person's constitution is. So a consultation would be required. You don't want to recommend something to somebody. It would be like the doctor giving a recommendation to you over the phone and they've never met you. They don't know anything about you and they don't even know what your condition is. It's, that would be really a liability. So you want to make sure you know what's going on with the person. You know what their constitution is. The next thing that you would find out is, well, what are their imbalances? What are they dealing with? That's called your vikriti. What is causing the, the altered state? Okay, physical, mental, emotional, they're usually all involved. And then the next thing you would do is find out the cause of the imbalance, the illness, the disease. And is it the diet? Is it the lifestyle? Is it something that's emotional? Is it um, the, an environment that they're in? Is it their relationships? Like they're in a toxic situation, relationship? Or is it genetic? Is it a predisposition? There's a lot of things to consider and you want to know which what's going on. And then you would look at what's the first line of treatment to remove the cause. Will you always get to the root cause? Say it's your diet. Then we change the diet. That's where we deal with it. And for a lot of people, it is their diet. It is their diet and their lifestyle. But often they say over 80% of what Westerners deal with as far as illnesses and diseases is preventable. And most of it is caused because of diet and lifestyle. So I, that's where Ayurveda is such a great complement to Western medicine. It's a great complement because that's what we focus on, diet, lifestyle, and uh, other stuff too. But anyway, then the next thing that you would want to do is the proper regime. And what that means is proper means appropriate to their constitution. One thing works for someone, it doesn't work for everyone. So you don't just give everybody a blanket program. Okay, everybody, we're all going to do this. That's not appropriate. It needs to be individualized because somebody's constitution is different. Some people run hot, some people run cold. That matters. All right. And then at that point, um, oh, and by the way, in that part of it where you're looking at the regime, you also have to consider uh, where the person lives and also what season it is and the climate and that kind of stuff because that matters as well. All right, then you do detoxification. So this is why I was saying it's a little more complicated <laughs> because you can't just rejuvenate without making sure that you detoxify. So detoxification means that you're either going to do elimination of toxins or you do a palliative process where you hope, hope stabilize the person. And then the next step is to rejuvenate. So then rejuvenation, which is also called rasana, and that is to increase immunity and strengthen the tissues, strengthen the cells, the organs. And that is where 
what I was just talking to you about, you know, like all of the diet stuff, that is where you start really focusing on how do I nourish the body? And then you provide therapies that help keep the constitution and the individual in balance, right? And helps them keep their cells healthy and make sure that they do not fall out of their, whatever their practices or their regime is, do you keep them on track so that they stay healthy? A lot of people do the Ayurvedic cleanse. A lot of people do the Ayurvedic cleanse. And then they go, oh, I'm healthy and I'm really good. And they feel great. And then they go back to what they were doing. And that is not what you should be doing. It's like, no, you just rejuvenated your body and you are nourish the, nourishing the cells. And we want to maintain that. So you do want to maintain it. When you're making these lifestyle changes, you want to maintain them. Okay, so that's my talk for tonight. And I do have a little thing on sprains. I'm just going to tell you really quick that sprains, by the way, which is what I have, is a pitta condition. And if you have a sprain, you want to make sure that you are doing everything possible to create stability. So you wrap it and uh, you get a brace, those kinds of things. And then you wanna keep it elevated. And I wanted to give you guys this tip because it's so interesting. There is an enzyme in pineapple juice and pomegranate juice that helps to reduce inflammation and accelerates the healing process. Isn't that great? I love pineapple juice. So pineapple juice is a way of rejuvenating. And also there's paste that you can make. Soaking in Epsom salt is also beneficial because it reduces the swelling. And a lot of the stuff that they give is very similar to what we already do in the West. But we also have things like using mustard tea, mustard seed that you make into a tea, using turmeric with salt, making it into a paste, cool water. And all of those things, they reduce the inflammation and the swelling. So there's lots of, of Ayurvedic ways of managing it as well. So that is sprains. Um, let's get started with our practice. 